Well, good evening, everyone. It's always such a blessing to stand in front of this auditorium and look out on the full auditorium of all the family, friends, and all of the relatives, and of course, the graduates, for uh, the privilege of being here to celebrate this hour, hour and a half with you. We're also grateful that those that weren't able to attend and are comfortably sitting in their living rooms, that you're able to watch live stream and enjoy this with us. So we welcome you too. For the start of this evening, I'd like to share some reflections as I read from the text of Psalm uh, 136. Our guest speaker for the evening is Pastor Vanderveld, and he's going to come up a little bit later, and he's going to share with us some of the truths that we find in Psalm 136 and apply it to our lives and specifically your lives. So I'm going to read the first nine verses and then jump towards the end for the last several verses. It's a psalm that reflects on God's love, and you will notice that when the refrain from every verse responds with is, love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him alone who does great wonders, his love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. Who made the great lights, his love endures forever. The sun to govern the day, his love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night, his love endures forever. He remembered us in our low estate, his love endures forever, and freed us from our enemies, his love endures forever. He gives food to every creature, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, his love endures forever. So I'm just going to share with you some reflections. I'm certainly not going to steal uh, the pulpit here from Pastor Vanderveld and steal his thunder. He, I'm sure you will have enough to say. But I do have some thoughts, and then I would like to just end off in prayer or start off the evening with prayer. So I have a question for you graduates. What do you want from your life? What do you want from your life? This is a question that not only applies to all of you, it applies to every person here, young and old. It's a question we all have to ask every day of our life. We do well to understand that it's not what you know or what you believe, but what you want that will set the focus of your life. A French author that perhaps some of you are familiar with through your studies in French class, from the title of, or from the author, Antoine de saint exuberay Exuberay, I had to pronounce that a whole dozen times before I said it, and it didn't even come out clearly, obviously. Anyway, he was known for a famous quote, many famous quotes, but he's also known for a book that possibly, I'm pretty sure some of you studied in French class, Le Petit. Prince, the little prince. And one of his famous quotes is found in most motivational speeches, corporate boardrooms. It goes like this. If you want to build a ship, don't drum up people together to collect wood and don't assign them tasks and work, but rather teach them to long for the endless immensity of the sea. When you reflect on that, I have another question for you. What has your four years of Guido given you? Did it fill your brain with knowledge? Did it drive you to an educational quest or on an educational quest? Perhaps the educational routines of the last four years drove you to anger and frustration and you don't want to continue your studies. 
One objective of your high school education was to develop a fine mind. But most importantly, it was designed to develop a heart that longs for something so much bigger. Well, you may ask, what is that? And I can say that it is certainly no secret, but it is a lifelong education and challenge. And that is a heart that longs for the Lord in everything you do and say and act. You're familiar with the text from Matthew 6, verse 21, where your treasure is, there is where your heart is also. Your four years at Guido was not intended to just have you fully understand quadratic equations, science formulas, construction techniques, or how to slam a basketball, or do a great spike. Your four years of Guido was designed to give you a thirst to long for the endless immensity of God's enduring love, just as we could read in Psalm 136. So on behalf of the board, and staff, the entire parent community here that is here supporting you, we pray that you may always grow in your love for God, in your continued studies, in your workforce endeavors, and in your relationships. God's love is bigger than the endless immensity of the sea, and may you enjoy the journey and path of life, learning and living that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that we may profess that your love is enduring, as the psalmist could repeat over and over again. And may that be our confession every single day. And may that drive us, Lord, to serve you and love you with conviction in our heart. And we pray, Lord, that these past four years may have been just that, a small taste for these graduates that... In everything that they do, that they may stop, they may think, and they may listen, and they may remember your enduring love and your enduring promises. And may you continue to show them that in their walk of life. May you bless them. May you give them every rich blessing in understanding your word. May you fill their hearts with your spirit. May you guide them every single day to you. And that no matter where they are in life or when they are in life, that they may reflect on those truths that they learned in elementary school and in high school, of those amazing stories in the Bible, of your grace, your love, your care, and your discipline, and they may reflect that that is all for them also in their walk of life. May you be their God and their keeper, and may you be with us tonight, Lord, as we celebrate with them, and may you be praised through our words and through our actions. To you be praise and glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. May you enjoy the evening celebrating with our graduates. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, graduands. It's a principal's privilege actually to say graduands. Right? Like, what is that? It's graduands. You're not graduates yet, you will be. So, graduands, parents of the graduands, grandparents of graduands, friends, family. This morning, Mr. Tomlin came up to me and he said, Jay, no one has ever said, I wish my principal's graduation speech was longer. <laughs> and I am not here to prove him wrong. But I will do what I can to be brief. So I actually wrote down what I was going to say. I probably won't use it, but I did write it down. Because one of the things that came as kind of a revelation to me over the, over the year, uh, and it's been my privilege to have as my first year as principal at Guido this particular graduating class. The characters that I got to know, the people I got to see, the parents I got to meet. And I came to the realization that school, especially like a, a high school, it's kind of like head cheese. Head cheese. See, head cheese 
is, well, when it's well made, it's wonderful. You got to picture this. What you do is you take the head of a pig, and you, you just have the head. It's got some gristle on it yet. The nostrils are there. It's got these beady little black eyes, the tongue kind of hanging out. And you take the head of this pig, and you put it face up, of course. It's way more fun. Face up in a cauldron. Big stock pot. Then you take vegetables like onions, and garlic, and cloves, and whatever other type of spices you have, and you have this, this, this pig's head staring up at you with his beady little eyes and his hair and his nostrils, and you fill it then full of water. It's okay, Mr. Spolstra. You, can, you'll, you will forget the image. You get this, this cauldron of bubbling, boiling water with these, with these beady eyes kind of staring up through the bubbles, and you bring it to a boil, and you let it simmer for about six hours. And it gets this, this kind of rich, rich kind of frothy look to it. After which point you, you pour out the, the broth, you sieve out the vegetables, and you're stuck with this, this pig's head. And the eyes are no longer as beady. And the gristle's kind of loose. And it doesn't look nearly as good at the beginning, as it, or at the end, as it did at the beginning. And then you take it apart, you peel back the skin, you scoop out the eyes, you prick the tongue with a fork, and if it pricks easy, you know it's cooked well. And then you shred it all up, and you pour it inside the broth, and this broth becomes like a gelatin, and it, it gives the fat inside, it congeals, so when it gets hard, all these bits of meat are stuck inside this congealed fatty goop. And then you shove it inside a sausage container. And it's called head cheese. School is kind of like head cheese. A whole lot of work goes into making it good. But very few people admit they like it. See, this is school. It has its point where it's like a pig's head staring up at you with its beady little eyes, and it looks like it's going to be gruesome. And some people cannot wait. You know, for some people, the best part of head cheese is when it's all gone. That's just like school. But it has a lot of work that needs to go into it. Just like school. There's a process just like school. And everyone that's involved in that process has their role. And you know this. Spending four years here at Guido, you know this. And you also know that not every experience you've had in high school is one that you're going to look back on and say, that was amazing. There's some experience you've had in high school that you wish you'll never remember. And there's some experiences in high school that you hope you never forget. And we know that with the people, with the people involved, the work with the teachers, it was done imperfectly. We've shown our love for school through the subject matter. We've shown our love for school through the work that we've done with you, the conversations that we've had, some of us is with our interests, but we also know that we show our love for the Lord and the work that we do in the school. And we work at it well, and we fail. And nobody knows, actually, the teachers' failures as well as the students do. Well, maybe their parents. But we do hope, as staff, that you've also seen our love for the Lord shining through our work, even in its imperfections. And maybe sometimes because of its imperfections. That you've seen joy in the classroom. That you've seen that love of subject. That you've seen the fact that we, we look at these things, at the, the, the kind of grossness sometimes of school. And we show that we still love it 
also because you are there. And we know that not every teacher showed God's love the way he wants to be displayed at all times. And that's not okay. But it's reality. And it's also reality that neither did you. And so what we are is we're a group of broken people working through four years of your life. And we work together to the best of our abilities for the love of the Lord. And school, now that you're finished, your work here, you're going to pick up that work somewhere else. Some of you are going to work. I talked to one guy running in five minutes too, and he says, well, I had to work today. You know, this becomes, this becomes your next stage. And we do hope that you tackle that work, that you look at it for its grimy grossness, that every once in a while you'll see the little pig eyes coming out in the gristles, and you remember that your work is also a display of the love of the Lord in your life. Wherever you go, college, university, your mother's basement, wherever you go, we hope that you take the love of the Lord with you. And that you also see the love of the, work, the Lord in the work of your hands. And if you have plans, you have ambitions, on behalf of the staff here at Guido, we wish to leave you with some words of wisdom as put down by the teacher. Take Ecclesiastes 5, verse 18 with you. And it's not all pretty. It's not all nice. But it's core to a life served to the Lord. The teacher has looked at all things. He did all things. He did all kinds of crazy stuff. And he said, it's all vanity. Except one thing. He said, I have seen what is best for the people here on earth. That they should eat. And that they should drink. And they should enjoy their work. Because the life God has given them on earth is short. God gives some people the ability to enjoy health, sorry, wealth and property that he gives them, as well as the ability to accept their state in life and enjoy their work. They don't worry about how short life is because God keeps them busy with the things that they love to do. And you couple that with the chief end of man being to serve God and enjoy him forever. And that becomes your work that you love to do. We don't know what the future holds. But we pray that you'll respond to the Lord's call in your life. That you'll serve the Lord with the work of your hands. So that through your joy in your work, whatever that happens to be, you also have the joy of finding what it means to serve God forever.
used to grab the many trials that seem to never end this word declares this truth we will enter in this rest with wonders anew but i'll hold on to this hope and the promise that he brings there will be a place with no more suffering there will be a day with no more tears no more pain and no more fears there will be a day when the burdens of this place will be no more we'll see jesus face to face but until that day Walked out all alone Troubled soul, don't lose your heart Cause joy and peace he brings And the beauty that's in store Always a hurt of life's sting But I'll hold on to this hope And the promise that he brings There will be a place with no more suffering There will be a day with no more tears, no more pain, and no more fears. There will be a day when the burdens of this place will be no more. We'll see Jesus face to face. But until day when the very one I've lived for always will wipe away the sorrow that I place. Oh, to touch the scars that rescued me from a life of shame and misery. Oh, this is why, this is why I day when the burdens of this place will be no more we'll see jesus face to face there will be a day with no He'll wipe away the tears, he'll wipe away the 
graduates, family, friends, let me begin by asking the graduates a question. Does the number 26 mean anything to you? Would you ever want to be part of the 26th Army Corps? Or if sports teams were known by numbers, would you want to be part of Team 26? Tonight we read a part of Psalm 136. And the unique thing about Psalm 136 is that there's a recurring refrain for the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. And if you were to count up how many times that occurs, it occurs 26 times. And that's actually very significant because in Hebrew, every letter of the alphabet or every word had a numerical value. And if you add up the value of the letters of the name Lord with four capitals, Yahweh, it comes to the number 26. And that's greatly significant because what it means is that the name of God and who our God is, is synonymous with steadfast love. Our God, the Lord, Yahweh, is all about steadfast love. And his steadfast love is toward us. And the meaning of his name, Yahweh, even means I am who I am which means that he is who he says he is and he does what he says he will do. You can count on him. You can build your life on him. And the repetition of this phrase, the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever, 26 times in this psalm emphasizes the message of this psalm. And that is that the Lord is the God of enduring love. You can base your life on him with confidence as you go forward from here. Psalm 136 tells us this by focusing on two things. It talks about God's commitment to this earth and God's commitment to its people. God created this world in the beginning. He created it beautifully. But we fell into sin. We marred it. But God didn't let go of it. God reached down. And God, in his steadfast love, promised a savior. And the psalm goes through a few verses to express that. And each verse says, for his steadfast love endures forever. And he promised a savior. And to bring that savior into the world, he worked through his people Israel. And his people Israel had to endure a lot of hardship and suffering. But the Lord brought them out of that suffering. He led them through the Red Sea in a most miraculous way. The waters just separated like that. And Israel walked right through the midst of the sea on dry ground. For his steadfast love endures forever. And then God sent his only son to be our savior. As it says in John 3, verse 16, probably the most well-known text in the Bible, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's the goodness of our God. And that's reason for giving thanks to God. And that's why the psalm begins with that opening verse, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. And I may say to you graduates tonight, this is your God. And you belong to this God. Sometimes people identify with a certain team or with a certain number. Your identity is connected with the Lord, your covenant God. You've been baptized into the name of the triune God. In fact, we confess in the Belgian Confession, Article 34, quote, by baptism we are received into the church of God and set apart from all other peoples and false religions to be entirely committed to him whose mark and emblem we bear. End of quote. Mark and emblem. 
That's military language. That's a reference to military identification, a badge identifying on whose side we are. In fact, the Christian church has been known as the army of Christ, the militia Christi. We can also say it with the language of sports teams. You're on God's team. You're wearing God's jersey. You're on team 26. And you were taught that for four years at Guido. You were taught that this God loves you and that you're called to serve him in every area of life. You were taught to see and glorify this God and all the subjects. I remember from the time that I was at Guido, and it's still there, that plaque on the wall at one of the entrances, a quotation from the Belgian Confession, Article 12, a quotation which tells us what Guido is all about, what our lives are all about, to the end that man may serve his God. Guido has helped you prepare for a life of service to the Lord your God. Remember, all your life long, as you go forward from here, the relationship that the Lord has with you and the relationship that you have with the Lord. Remember, you're on Team 26. Play like you're on Team 26. Thank you. For those of you who can't imagine anyone would survive head cheese, I grew up with that as a kid and I survived. Okay, let's get started. 
We certainly welcome your applause for all of our graduates as they file onto the stage. Bree Sydney Alkama. <laughs> Owen Nathaniel Alkama. <laughs> Calvin Jacob Bartels. <laughs> Haley Christina Irene Bartels. Olivia Derica Bartels. Peyton Allegra Bartels. Anthony James Bias. Jordan Anthony Bias. Natasha Ann Blocker. <laughs> Owen William Blocker. <laughs> Jacqueline Lucille Boisvert. <laughs> Kaylee Marie Bork. Cohen Jonathan Boss. <laughs> Megan Sydney Boss. <laughs> Jamie Madison Bauman. <laughs> Douglas Simon Brookelman. Matthew Jacob Bukema. <laughs> Samantha Claire Bolcha. Yeah. Olivia Suying Chung. <laughs> Kristen Joanne DeBoer. Samuel Kaim Dehan. Joni Teresa Dehan. Kennedy Margaret Decker. Shailen Afka Denbruder. Mitchell Barry Gelms. Nicole Joanne Gelms. Brandon Jan Groon. Jasmine Joanne Harsevort. Carissa Michelle Harzevort. Brandon Levi Hofsink. Jonathan Elijah Hofsink. Haley Ann Hoekstein. Amber Nicole Hordike. Mackenzie Jade Hordike. Jedzia Jolanda Heimering. Levi Eric Jans. Shania Brianne Jansma. (laughs) 
Braden Eric Youngblood. Elena Mareka Junker. Caitlin Christine Junker. Colin William John Campen. Lewis Henry Campen. Samantha Elizabeth Kierce. Troy Martin Koning. Sarah Elizabeth Lanting. Christian Hank Lichtenberg. Chantel Elizabeth Loff. Jillian Andrea Ludwig. Joshua Harrison Ludwig. Michaela Sharon Mirvelt. Arden Eileen Catherine Miller. Dean William Muse. Ryan Matthew Nyenhouse. Michaela Rose Nobles. Kyle Justin Nordeman. Emma Alberta Ostein. Derek Matthew Ports. Reuben Nicholas Ports. Nathaniel Peter Ravensbergen. Scott Matthew Salomons. Taylor Maria Skipper. Jonah Harmon Schultens. Hudson James Schulenberg. Jordan Gregory Schutten. Joel Libertus Willem Smith. <laughs> Noah Gregory Spanninga. <laughs> Dustin Lee Spoolstra. <laughs> Ashley Eve Steginga. Jonah Nicholas Steginga. Michelin Ileana Tell. Lauren Janelle Tenage. Doran Philip Togritz. Emily Maria Tomlin. Devin Edward Van Andel. Devin 
Jaden Matthew Van Andel. Arissa Melanie Vanderbilt. Melanie Lorraine Vanderboom. Kendra Mariana Vanderhoeven. Adam Jacob Vandervelde. Garrett John Vandervelde. Jenna Brienne Vandervelde. Emma Paige Vanderwood. Gideon Kenneth Vanderwood. Lauren Ariana Vanderwood. Devin Peter Van Eggman. Amy Jean Van Ness. Beth Aaron Van Seidenborg. Ruben Daniel Van Veen. Ruth Adele Van Vliet. Timothy Gert Van Woodenberg. Catherine Elida Viss. Nathan John Wonders. Joel Robert Workman. Ariana Rose Westlake. Jessica Lillian Williston. Kieran Christian Woodenberg. Hannah Yakub. Ruhama Yakub. And Sherilyn Irene Yaboa. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a complete class of 2019.
It is our pleasure to present the Guido de Bre scholarships. For the first scholarship, it is the University Stream. This award is presented to the three graduating students who are eligible for university, and it is given in recognition of exceptional scholarly achievement in six grade 12 university or grade 12 university college prep courses. And congratulations to Chantel Loff. Chantel has been a top Guido Honors role since she was in grade nine. A quiet student who excels in every subject area, her most notable achievement came in grade 12 when she achieved, nine, well, it's probably the worst mark you can get in math, 99%. And that's in advanced functions and a 98% in calculus and vectors. So congratulations, Chantel Loff. Owen Alkema is also a recipient of this award. Yeah. Owen is a thinker. He can often be found in the hall of the library debating with various people on a wide range of topics. He can be described as an all-around student who achieved high 90s in languages, math, classics, and Bible. Owen is also known to dabble in the dramatic arts as he embraced the role of brigand number two in the court of Bess. Congratulations, Owen. And Ruth Van Vliet is also receiving this honor. Ruth can be described as a student with exceptional organizational skills and a sharp sense of humor. She's a hard worker. She's always been involved in helping in SLT events and in class, she demonstrated understanding and effort and was awarded with a 91% average in her grade 12 courses. So congratulations, Ruth. In the college stream, recipients are also up on the stage. This award is presented to the graduating students whose high school courses are designed to lead to a college program. In recognition of exceptional scholarly achievement in grade 11 and 12 courses, we give our congratulations to Natasha Blocker. She's another student whose name always appeared at the top of the honors roll each year. She's a hard worker with an interest in graphic design, and she managed to achieve an impressive 100% in her co-op placement this past semester. Noah Spaninga also received this award. Noah is known, sorry. <laughs> Noah is known around Guido as a student who always smiles and he's easy to talk to. He's good natured and his willingness to learn has come in handy as he topped 95% in both grade 12 math and history. <laughs> so now you don't know when to clap, when not to clap, and it's all. Shania Jansma, Shania is a friendly and hardworking student who does her work without much fanfare, but she does it well. Most impressively, she achieved a 98% in grade 12 math, along with a 94 in Bible and food and nutrition. So congratulations to the six of you. So Mr. Loff and I have the pleasure to present the subject specific awards to six 
very worthy recipients. So, first we have Joni DeHaan. <laughs> Joni has a strong, positive presence. She was a leader in both senior phys ed and in food nutrition class. Joni was able to display good Christian character in the classroom and on the court. Joni led by example, doing her work with a combination of determination, diligence, and excellence. Even when dealing with an injury, Joni found a way to keep smiling and encouraging her teammates. Congratulations, Joni. Jonathan Hofsink. John is a notably talented clarinetist and has been a member of the senior band and orchestra <laughs> at Quito. He has been a positive influence in music classes, encouraging others to try their hardest and modeling how to go the extra mile, not only in musical performance, but also in composition work. John is likely best known to be somewhat of a drama king. <laughs> having participated in everything dramatic since he was in grade nine, including Annie and the Court of Bess. Congratulations. <laughs> Next is Garrett Vanderveld. <laughs> Garrett combined dedication, hard work, and clear thinking in all of his classes. He particularly particularly excelled in philosophy with a mark of 95%. Garrett is no slouch in other disciplines, excelling in his science and math courses as well. Next year, Garrett plans to pursue his studies in business at McMaster. Congratulations. Next is Jordan Schutten. Jordan loves to talk, <laughs> but he particularly enjoys learning and speaking in other languages. This is highlighted by his 93% in grade 12 French and his many appearances on the stage. Jordan spent many a math class conversing in German or Russian, complaining that the math was all Greek to him. His goal is to study to become a translator. Congratulations. Next, we have Lewis Campin. <laughs> Lewis began his mathematics career at Guido while a grade eight student as part of the Reach Ahead program. He was clearly a great choice for this program and has excelled in all his math courses at Guido, culminating in a 95% final mark in calculus and vectors. Lewis plans to pursue a Bachelor of Technology degree at McMaster University. He also spelt his spent his time at Quito in the orchestra club, playing basketball, and as president of the SLT. Congratulations. <laughs> and last but not least, the science award goes to Emma Tomlin. Emma has proven that determination and hard work does pay off. She plans to pursue a degree in biology on the West Coast with an eye to either forensics or marine biology. Her time at Guido was largely spent studying, but she found time to be involved in play productions such as Annie and the Court of Bess, as well as several excursions with the Outdoors Club. Congratulations. The Academic Athletic Scholarship Award is presented to the graduating student who had the highest grade 12 academic average while participating in at least two sports in her final year before graduation. The Academic Athletic Scholarship Award 
goes to Emma Vanderwood. <laughs> Emma is an exemplary student. Achieving a 90% average in her grade 12 year while playing on the senior girls basketball team and doing high jump on the track and field team. I had the privilege of teaching her kinesiology and working with her on the athletics council. She was diligent, organized, and motivated in all these areas. We appreciate her contributions at Guido and wish her well as she, as she uses these gifts to serve in other capacities and as she embarks on the rest of her schooling. Congratulations, Emma. Talia and I have the opportunity to present to you the Guido Participation Awards. This award is presented to graduating students who have accumulated a total of 70 blue and gold points over their four years at Guido. Points are earned by participating in various extracurricular activities such as sports, the arts, SLT, assemblies, and many other clubs offered at Guido. So uh, congratulations goes to the following participation award winners. First there's Kaylee Bork. <laughs> Next we have Amber Hordyke. <laughs> Lewis Campen. Ryan Neinhuis. <laughs> Kyle Nordman. <laughs> Next is Lauren Tenage. Marissa Vandenberg. <laughs> and lastly, Ruben Van Veen. <laughs> and special recognition, recognition goes to Arissa Vandenberg for getting over 100 points. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. The uh, Governor General's Medal, established in 1873, recognizes students who have achieved the highest academic average over their final two years of high school. Uh, it's my honor to present uh, tonight this year's medal to Chantel Loff. So Chantel is a quiet, serious, and industrious student. Um, she achieved a 93% average in all her senior courses over the last two years, excelling, as was mentioned earlier, particularly in math. And high school math, in fact, was so easy for Chantel that she decided to start studying at Brock this past year in an exclusive fast-track program where she plans to complete a four-year degree in three years. Um, Chantel, may you continue to use the gifts, academic gifts God has blessed you with. Congratulations.
The Lieutenant Governor's Community Volunteer Award is sponsored by the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario and presented to a graduating student in recognition of exemplary volunteer involvement within the community. All graduating students in Ontario are required to complete a minimum of 40 hours of volunteer work to receive their diplomas, but Gillian Ludwig has far exceeded this, um, this amount. Gillian has completed 310 hours of volunteer work Most of these hours were completed at Streetlight Ministries, working with Kids Club and also Campfire. In addition to her dedication in serving others, Jillian was still able to maintain a high academic standard and achieve a place on the honor roll. Congratulations, Jillian. sorry, Dr. F. G. Ostroff Student of the Year Award is presented to the graduating student selected as having met a range of criteria related to exceptional contributions to school life in general. Acceptance of responsibility, involvement in a variety of activities, consideration for fellow students, a spirit of cooperation, a positive attitude towards schoolwork, and exemplary modeling of what the school represents. So congratulations to Arissa Vandenberg for her work in the school. Arissa is a member of the SLT, a few, more than a few sports teams. She's had the opportunity to interact with numerous students and staff during her time here at Guido. She always wears that smile, see? And if you're ever going to see a student wandering the halls. And she does it all with a friendly and engaging spirit, excellent student achieving an 89% average in her final year at Quito. Next year, Arissa plans to be part of Redeemer University's college's new gap year program. So congratulations, Arissa. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. The teachers never tell you how hot these things actually are. I would have just worn underwear under these. <laughs> okay, now to the Guido sanctioned part of the uh, valedictory speech. So good evening, parents, grandparents, teachers, board members, friends, and fellow graduates. On behalf of our class of Guido de Bra, I welcome you to our commencement ceremony. A mere four years ago, we entered the halls of Guido as scared little grade niners. Some of us crept in, inwardly cringing with fear and anxiety. Others strutted through the doors with a false sense of security. And now, here we are, at the end of our high school journey. Some are still inwardly cringing with fear and anxiety, and others are still strutting about the halls with a false sense of security. Yeah, we haven't changed much, except for we're a little taller, some people think we're smarter, and uh, some of us have longer hair. <clears throat> now at this point, the most valedictorians would go, ah, wow, what a rush. We've been so enlightened by this experience. But I, I want to change that a little bit. I want to change the common con conception of that. So lots of people would compare high school to like a ladder where you go up every rung and then slowly go to succeeding, which is graduation. Others would compare it to head cheese. <laughs> okay, Mr. Heemskirk. And But I would consider it 
Uh, like a cinder block tied around your neck when you're swimming. <laughs> At first, it kind of seems like it's dragging you drown and down and you're going to drown. But eventually, you don't even notice it's there, mostly. And you're, you become strong enough to notice that it's not even there, and you're ready for anything that life will throw at you. The Apostle Peter says in 1 Peter 5, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. The difference between us and the Apostle Peter is that he was stoned and beaten, and we're just complaining about an hour of homework every night. Throughout the years of all this heavy toil, something amazing has happened to us and in us. We made new friends we've never thought we'd have. We've learned how to speak up for ourselves, how to support our friends, and how to stand up for the ones who are being picked on. We've gained a new interest in subjects from art to history to physics to co-op and all with a view to our future. We have become more determined workers, always striving to get things done, so much so that on the last night before an assignment is due, we work at it till 4 o'clock in the morning till it's done. But that's more a case of procrastination, and I've never done that before. Still, we all learn that we are capable of much more than we thought we were. As Michelangelo once said, the greatest danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high, but that our aim is too low and we reach it. We will miss the little moments of high school life, such as the lunchtime hallway interactions. One group could often be seen deep into political debate, another huddled around freshly bought McDonald's, one student spilling his coffee nearly every day, and another group that enjoyed slamming each other into lockers while getting reprimanded by one teacher and getting cheered on by Mr. Tomlin. <laughs> Our class had many memorable accomplishments as well, such as the boys' soccer team winning the Cities and Sasa champions and getting to the quarterfinals of OFSA. We all supported you all the way through it, especially when anyone mentioned it and you got super mad about it. Girl and girls softball. There you go. <laughs> Whether our education was happening inside or outside the classroom, we were continually learning about the beauty and the order of this world that God made for us. We thank our parents and our teachers for guiding us through these years. Our parents first taught and modeled what it is like to be the child of God. They made sacrifices so we could attend a school where God is honored. They, they drove us to numerous practices, performances, and games. Then they prayed for us when we started driving to practices, performance, and games. <laughs> to our parents, we say thank you for all the years of love and the support you have given us. We are thankful to our teachers as well. Although we may have not always been the best towards them or them to us, we are grateful for their patience and knowledge they have given us. Henry Adams famously stated, A teacher affects eternity. He can never tell where his influence stops. I certainly hope so, as I recall another quote from an esteemed teacher of Guido de Brea. John, if, I'll give you 20 bucks if you mention me in the valedictory speech. <laughs> quote, Mr. Alkama. We would also like to thank our community for supporting us, especially those around the school, putting up with our really bad driving and lousy, loud drives to McDonald's. We will hold close our memories of Guido, the fun we had in class, our teachers, and the closest we enjoyed with one another for the four years. We hope that the friendships we have formed will continue to deepen and grow as we follow all of our different life paths. As we head off to university, college, apprenticeships, or the workforce, we are extremely thankful for the formal education and life lessons we have received at Guido de Brea. Although it may have seemed rough or too overwhelming at times, this school helped prepare us for our future in that life doesn't go the way we plan or want it to. We are comforted in the knowledge that God is in control of our lives and he has a good and perfect plan for each and every one of the graduates you see here before you. We thank you for your support and we, we ask that you pray for us as we leave our Guido years behind. Thank you once again for coming to this important event in our lives.
may I lead you in thanksgiving prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your enduring love for us, your people. We thank you for your love that you have shown us all, but especially to this graduating class of Gita de Brea High School. We confess that your love for them started before the foundation of the world, and that in time you placed them with believing parents into a nurturing church family, and for many could be blessed with a Christian education, with Christian teachers who taught them various subjects from a Christian worldview. You taught them your gospel and about your glorious deeds from of old. You have been faithful to your promises and we give you thanks for this day as we could celebrate this graduation evening. This has been your work and your blessings upon them. We ask and pray that as they go into the workforce or begin to study at college or university, keep the devil far away from them. Keep them as the apple of your eye. Hide them in the shadow of your wings. Remind them of their identity in Jesus Christ, that they are adopted as prince and princes of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Help them grow in knowledge, wisdom, and in godliness. Remind them always that they are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God has prepared in advance for them to walk in. We thank you, dear Father, for Gita de Brea High School, for its leadership, its staff, its special education program, its caretaker, the board and its various committees. Continue to bless them all, endow them with grace and wisdom to nurture the next generation of students for your glory. As we go from here this evening, May we be filled with joy, with thankfulness, and praise on our lips for your enduring and steadfast love. Grant us traveling mercies, we pray. Forgive that which was displeasing in your sight, and we pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. 